Welcome to Moments of Tooth, a podcast series when we interview dentists and dental students to learn more about what it takes to be happy and successful in the field of dentistry. Today's guest is Laura Fuentes, a newly minted fourth year dental student who has been navigating the ups and downs of seeing patients for the first time, but generally tackles challenges with a smile. So in today's episode, we'll be talking a lot about what it's like to start seeing and treating your own patients for the very first time. I can tell you what uh, your heart rate your heart rate after day is yeah. and you can like see yeah. where the clinicals were mine starts beeping it's <laughs> it goes ding, 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 ding. Or like when and I look at it it's and above and 120 and I'm just sitting yeah. <laughs> I'm not it's like don't worry I promise I know what I'm doing you're okay yeah. it's yeah. just the song playing on my phone it's fine okay so before we get into all the trauma all right. is associated with okay. dentistry I brought tissues, that, we, so. <laughs> that we know and love. Tell us a bit about the road to dental school. What what brought you into this into line? Of, yeah, like this line of life, I guess. So I always wanted to do medicine first. There's a lot of doctors and people in the medical field in my family, my dad's a gynecologist. Um, my mom was a nurse before they moved here. I have a neurosurgeon in my oh family. My goodness. <laughs> but I was never really pressured into doing medicine. Mm. I never felt my parents let me choose, yeah. you know, to do whatever I wanted. But I was always fascinated with medicine. And like in town, all of our Cuban friends, every Cuban I know is a doctor. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> and most of my friends are doing medicine as it's well just, now. It's the cool kid thing. Yeah, too. it's just, you know, the foreigner thing. So, <laughs> so, yeah, up until grade 10, I always wanted to do medicine. Mm-hmm. But then I had, so I had braces for like a year and a half. Had this big smile for my tiny face. <laughs> And the orthodontist in the beginning, she saw the size of my parents and she's in her mind, she's like, she is not going to grow anymore, but I'm just going to do the full treatment on her without extracting any teeth, okay. you know? So towards the end, I had this massive smile and I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't. So yeah, the premolars were extracted and then I had braces for another year and a half. Nice. So I was in and out of the orthodontist for quite a long one. So I was like, you know, this is, this is kind of cool. So grade 11 and matric, I was like, dentistry. And I feel like it's also a much cleaner route of like medicine. So if you chose medicine, dentistry is a much cleaner thing. I feel like it's a more kind of like sophisticated, more thing-ish. I feel like for me... The word that's always come to mind is like it feels a bit more controlled. Yes. Like you're more in charge of, yeah. of what's happening. But um, yeah, the, the author thing is funny. So for me, I, I had the same problem basically. Um, nice. So I had braces. <laughs> I've had it three times at this point. Oh, my. So first round, and then they were like, oh, this kid is tiny. <laughs> and his teeth are massive. <laughs> so also had pre just taken out another round. And then uh, <coughs> critics would say haters would haters. say I didn't wear my retainer. Okay, and um, I'm not true. Lies. Yeah, no, no, lies. lies were told. So, yeah. Um. Now I just woke up one day and it just wasn't really straight anymore. Oh. Um. So that that's when the third round happened. That's when the lies yeah. came out. <laughs> yeah. But I think it was, it was kind of similar for me. But like I just had a lot of exposure <laughs> to like. I guess being a patient, yeah. Um, that I kind of became desensitized to a lot of dental things mm. that I think scare um, the Most patients. People, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> patients that I see, and so it's kind of routine stuff um, that's like intimidating to them. But I think I was like desensitized yeah. uh, prior to doing dentistry. So when I was like making the choices, I was like, I, I don't really mind being in that Swapping environment. roles. Yeah. <laughs> so prior to coming into dental school, so you had like the ortho treatment and stuff. Did you have any other experiences with dentists prior to that? No. Nope. Or? Or after, just like cleaning. Oh, okay. Yeah. So coming Touch into wood. it. Good teeth. <laughs> so coming into it, was it 
kind of what you thought it was going to be or did you Absolutely come in and all of a sudden not. I did not know I had to be artistic to be <laughs> a dentistry once we started doing things like those candle wax models mm. carving out teeth like I can't do this yeah. <laughs> I can't even draw a stick man and you want me to carve a tooth out of some candle mm. wax so yeah first year was pretty good like lots of theory that we didn't necessarily, I, I mean, I didn't necessarily expect we were going to be doing mm. medicine, mm. you know, the whole scope of medicine for the first two mm. years, three years, because even mm. half in third year was everything. Yeah, I feel like that this was a big thing for me. Like, I didn't realize <coughs> the scope yeah. uh, of dentistry or like um, of what you need to study to become a dentist. Because even in first year, when you're doing things like psychology and sociology, yes, like, exactly. I'm like, oh, sure, am I going to have to sit down in all yeah. my patients' <laughs> hand, figure things out through them, <laughs> with them? I'm like, no. <laughs> so it's, I feel like it's really things that you you learn and it kind of stays with you, but you're just never going to really use it. So yeah. I feel like it's like medicine and free state is five years because they don't really do all the or most of the unnecessary yeah. modules so i feel like they just throw a lot of things at you to keep you busy if you're not already busy enough yeah but yeah so what was your like overall experience with the like early years um let's say like first year to second year so i mean first year was in covid <laughs> we had the first two months so, on campus and then everything else was just at sitting home. alone in front of your computer trying to figure out what the lecture yeah. is saying on your own. But I mean, yeah, first year was pretty good. Um, chemistry was not good, but let's, I mean, let's not let's touch, not go to that let's not touch that's up chemistry. It. We're not using that anymore. Those, that, those are for the psychologists. Those are for the psychologists. <laughs> Which we also studied, ironic <laughs> enough, didn't really help much. Um, anatomy was good-ish. Because um, I did the first semester of dentistry in Russia. Mm. So when I got accepted here, I kind of knew everything of what was going on in anatomy. But here it was on steroids. <laughs> so it wasn't... Like, I kind of knew coming in what the anatomy was going to be like in second year mm -hmm. and all that. But, yeah, it was very different to how they teach it there. Like, here we have to do the dissections ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we did it there, everything was already there for yeah, you to you see. To yeah, you just yeah. had to look and know. And the lecturer would always be next to you because it was always really small groups. Mm -hmm. So not like here where there's one lecturer, 20 tables, and you kind of need to wait for someone to come and explain mm -hmm. something to you. Um, but yeah, in third year, third year was pretty exciting. Third year was, I mean, a ton of work. Yeah. And I feel like it, you set more into dentistry, you're like, this is actually difficult. <laughs> um, but the preclinicals were fun. Um, Odo was really, really fun. Apart from having to rush to do like seven restorations yeah. in one session. Um, Wait, so on that... What was your experience with preclin? <clears throat> did you find it like difficult or did you kind of pick it up? No, it wasn't quickly? really, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't really find it difficult. It was pretty, pretty easy. Not, well, not easy, easy, but easier to get into than you would expect to, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, because you already did. We had already done dentures in second year, so you already kind of know what you're doing mm. there. Um, it's just at a much quicker pace because yeah. you have so much more to do now mm. when you're not just doing one set of dentures yeah. in second year. Now you're doing three yeah. plus trays and investing, which we had to do during exams because we felt behind. <laughs> nice. So that was great. That was great. <laughs> that was great times. Um, but yeah, I think pre were pretty cool. Yeah, I, I enjoyed them. It, they were long, mm. but I enjoyed them. Mm. Yeah, Odo was nice. Mm. Yeah, I feel like but what's always interesting for me about pre is because the first few years are so academic, mm. I feel like people kind of tell themselves they're a certain kind of student based on how they've done up yeah. until that point and you get in pre <clears throat> 
And then some people just excel at free climbing yeah. and other people are like terrible. Yeah. And for me, like I, I did really well academically the first two years, got into third year and I was like bottom of the class <laughs> when it came to preclinicals. The last one. I think, I, I, actually, at least in Oda, I was, I was second to last. So yeah, it's, it's called performance. Oh, yes. okay. It's peak performance. Above, the, the, above your level. <laughs> but yeah, I do think preclin changes a lot of people's kind of perceptions yeah. on dentistry. And I think because it's a lot more focused, I think you get a sense of if you're going to like this or if yeah. you're not going to like this. Yes. But yeah, I mean, a third year is still tough because you guys still do like pharmacology, um, applied medicine, all that yeah. kind of things. So yeah, just, applied medicine wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a lot of content, yes. you know, yeah. to, to like It wasn't really too bad. Um, yeah, pharmacology and um, pathology were the main things. The main issues. <laughs> yeah, the main <laughs> issues. Um, the other, like, actual dentistry subjects like Odo, they were pretty cool because you'd kind of use what you're learning in the pre clin mm. to like, okay, I'm going to remember, you know, how to do a class yeah. two because I already learned it and I'm actually doing like mm. seven class two. So it kind of sticks with you, yeah. the theory aspect progressing into the pre clin mm. part of the day. So yeah, I think that's kind of what made the pre clins much easier because yeah. you read about it first and mm. like okay now i'm gonna apply it yeah. on someone who doesn't necessarily feel anything yeah, but just, there's room for improvement yeah, <laughs> yeah that's nice because you actually get to uh practice what is preached to you yeah know? but yeah i think uh like in theory i remember especially when we were doing things like perio where there wasn't really a pre-clean for it yeah um I was kind of like, okay, I'll study it, I'll study it. And then I got to fourth year and I was like, oh, I was supposed to remember that stuff. That <laughs> yeah. was important. Like, But at least if like um, restorative and prosthodontics, mm. because you're practicing exactly what you're studying, what you're doing, yeah. you actually yeah. know like, oh, this is why yeah. I need to know this stuff. But I remember with some of the other modules, I was just like, what do you mean I need to know? What, yeah, what I mean, stuff? coming into fourth year, I still didn't really know what we were going to do <laughs> in theory, to be honest. We had one pre clin test or like practical. Yeah, that did not go well. <laughs> Especially when you've never seen the instruments in yeah. your life before and they don't really show you what they look like. You need to Google it mm. on your own and hope that Google is right. <laughs> yeah, because there was this one time where we went to go get the instrument so we could look at them before the um, practical test and we asked the lecturer like, is this this instrument? She's like, I don't know. Go find yeah. out. And come and tell me when you come back. I'm like, I don't know, bro. That's why I came here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think period was one of the most shocking ones to to start with. Yeah. So okay, on the, on the topic of shocking, yeah, uh, I really wanted to chat to you about the kind of transition from preclin to clin. Because I think... To people who breathe and... <laughs> yeah, and like have emotions. <laughs> um, I think the first two months, from what I've seen, is usually the most intense for a lot of people. Mm. I guess more so from like a kind of emotional standpoint, because it's just, it's so real <clears throat> yeah. all of a sudden. So since you're kind of, I think, right in the middle of this like transition period, what has kind of been the experience for you over the past few weeks? If you kind of run us through like kind of how they introduced you guys. And like. So we had the first two weeks where it was like demos and kind of showing you around, I guess. Pro OFC, I think was one of the hardest to get into. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, um, it is. It is extracting. So <laughs> um, yeah, Max Pack was, was a shocker, and I haven't even had that many <laughs> sessions yet, so I can't say I've progressed into it. Yeah, I think because uh, I, was, I was there for one of your sessions. Yeah, and I walked past <laughs> and you were just like just sweat sweating, dripping, <laughs> patience shaking. Yeah, no. <laughs> the first one, yeah, the first session shaking, your first. Um, infiltration yeah. first injection but after that like let's move on from that now after that first injection i really don't well myself i don't know about everyone else but i, I feel more 
much more calm giving mm. injections now like you know where it is you know what to do you're not really shaking anymore mm. patient has their eyes closed they don't even know the needle yeah. is coming so it kind of puts you in a more calm yeah. state wait so, so on that what was how did you feel for for your first injection because i always tell people the first one is the bad one because it just it it feel there's something like in your head i think that's really difficult about putting a needle in someone if you've never done it before yes. and after you've done it for the first time it's like it's like something clicks and you're just like okay this is just part of the job yeah. and it's like you still got to figure out like how to give certain injections but it's almost like the emotional part yeah i mean i was stressed cuz i had my first max back session was the first injection i was ever going to give mm. and the preclin for for that doesn't really prepare you for what you're going to do in my opinion cuz they hold a dry skull mm. and, and the doctor's just the holding the dry skull and you can see the foramen yeah. exactly where it is <laughs> there's no cheek there's no tissues you don't have to retract anything you just hold the air and you say i'm going to retract the yeah. left so you don't you don't know exactly where to point or aim and how like it feels to finally get the needle into mm. the tissue and how deep how to deep go that. and what you need to feel mm. so i think that's why max pack was the most difficult one to mm. like flow into which like i said i can't really say i've flown into it yet but yeah i had a post your superior I'll be on a note block as my first one yes. and I'm like I have no idea where it's going. Let's go. try not to hit the plex. Yeah, let's it's let's good. not do anything bad this time. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of um, especially with injections um at the start it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So I remember the first time I had to give an in infer- inferior alveolar block. Um I'm sort of going in and I'm like I don't know how deep to go yeah. like is this too deep or do I still need to strike the bone and then it's like Yes. And I haven't I have even done that one. Have I struck the bone, or is it me that's just scared? Like, because <laughs> <laughs> you know, the needle's not moving. So it's like, which one is it? Yeah. I haven't even given that one yet. So <laughs> let's not talk about that. In, <laughs> let's not talk about that block. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like I said, Max Pack's been the most difficult one to get through, and you don't really know how much exactly how much pressure mm. you need to put on that tooth. for it to finally get moving. Mm. So I struggled for 40 minutes with my first extraction and Dr. Hamaldine would walk past and he'd see me going like this and he's like, "Hey, big old brush." I'm like, "I know. <laughs> I know do you not see the sweat dripping down my forehead?" But I think he was like, "You're doing this on your own." <laughs> Got to figure it out. Got to figure it out on your own. So my first extraction was successfully on my own. after 50 40 minutes <laughs> from where I can nice. say that but the one you were there for yeah was that a, that was struggle. an interesting extraction that I did not do on my <laughs> own. <laughs> yeah that was an interesting deep <laughs> but i mean i think it's um i think especially at the start and and i also just um like from an academic perspective there's a lot of leeway in terms of letting them help you. Yes. Um since a lot of those marks kind of they don't count as much. Yeah, as apparently the there. first ones are kind of like pushed to mm-hmm. your side. So it's a nice time to like figure it out and I think to <coughs> to have those bad sessions. Yeah. As like I think terrible as it sounds, I think it's better to have the bad sessions at the start. I think so too. Yeah, cuz I feel like it'll get you more into a rhythm as mm-hmm. well towards the end because if you get primary teeth period teeth you're like oh this is easy mm. and then let's say you're lucky enough to get easy teeth in the beginning four months in you get this standard tooth that you just cannot pull mm. out because you've just been extracting mm. baby teeth period teeth super loose teeth mm. and you're like oh wow <laughs> never mind <laughs> you know that's just that like frame of reference thing yeah um yeah i think for me at least um, I just I remember especially in prosthodontics I had some pretty difficult cases um in my first four year and when when I then got like normal cases it almost felt 
unfair, like how easy that was to do. Oh, okay. Because I was coming from the frame of reference of like having no ridge, yeah, no retention, yes, the bites never the same, like all that kind of yeah. stuff. So and I had like a patient where everything was just kind of normal. I was I kept waiting for something to go wrong and then nothing went wrong. Yeah. I was like, oh. Okay. There's a good side oh, yeah. to this. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> yeah, so prosto. Yeah, prosto. Um, there's not enough supervisors in there for mm. things to go smoothly yeah. for you, <laughs> I must say. Yeah, I think what happens um, every year is they underestimate how much help you need, especially yes. with impressions at the start. Because oh, yes. I think as you go along, eventually you've done so many impressions that you can like once you take the impression out and it's not right you know, you know why it's to, not yeah. right but at this start I feel like impressions it's the same thing it's one of those big things where there's just so much to know and you yeah. don't know what you don't know so it's like you take the impression it comes out it looks terrible and it's like I mean I think it looks good it's like, I don't even know how to fix this <laughs> like, you know, like, yes I think pasta has only been difficult because of that because it's in third year, they give you all the theory work. You're like, okay, I mean, this is pretty pretty decent to do, you know, impression, plaster, bite blocks, you know. But once you actually start doing it, you don't know how it's actually supposed to look like. You see it on a photo, but you see the good one on a photo. Yeah. So if you take, like you said, you take your impression out, you're like, I think it looks okay. You show it to the supervisor, like, nope, do it again. I'm yeah. like, why? Yeah. <laughs> what was wrong the first time? And that's after, like, 15 minutes of waiting for yeah. the supervisor to actually get to you. Mm. So it's it's very slow mm. in the beginning. Mm. Uh, well, what I've experienced, you retake impressions, like, four times mm. when the supervisor finally gets to you, and then they actually do it for you. And like, okay, now I understand mm. how to do it, so now maybe I can do it the next time. Mm. But then you get... Like we used SS White the first time we did an impression and then the next time they completely ran out of SS White and I have Impregno yeah. and it felt so much more difficult to work with a different material. Yeah. Especially since we I don't really remember going into the Impregno so much in detail in mm. third year either. So you don't know what it's supposed yeah. to look like. You don't know how to mix this thing. <laughs> yeah, and I remember for me as well, like back in third year specifically, they told us, like, no, we're probably going to use, like, the SS White mm. um, zinc oxide usual to take most of the secondary impressions. So I remember, like, that's what I prepped. Yeah. And then the day I come to take secondaries, they're like, yeah, using prick. And I'm like, okay, what, what now? <laughs> and what now? And I'm like, frantically trying to Google how to <laughs> use in yep. And it's just all this stuff where it's like, um, I feel like there's too much to know. And it's just impossible to prepare yes. for everything. So it's kind of... It becomes kind of a practical sport where you have to just kind of learn by just yeah you the you go through it while actually doing it mm. <laughs> you kind of go into your session knowing i'm not really gonna know exactly how to do this so i know i'm gonna need help to do this like with my bike registration i knew all the theory i know i need to do this i know i need to do that but you don't exactly know like how angulated things need to be so like i think it looks fine but it's not fine but from theory this is what I'm seeing. Mm. So I think that's why Prosto has been difficult because mm. the theory aspect doesn't really prepare you mm. for the actual practical aspect. Mm. And also when we had our um, those two weeks of like preclinical demos before we actually started, everyone had a different lecturer or different doctor showing you. So one set of students know how to do this better or in a better method and another mm. set of students know how to do it in another method. Mm. And also when you're in the clinicals, for example, heating up green stick, one lecturer will tell you, use the flame, and the other one will tell you, where is your boiling water? And I'm like, which one do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> like my preclinical used the flame and the, the, and the boiling water. I don't know that I need yeah. to use a specific one. So, yeah, I think that's what's made the prostate, the difficult part. Mm. Yeah, I think I think of a lot of things in the industry as much as there's like a standard operating procedure yes. for a lot of things. Um, people have different styles because there's don't skin cats, but there's different different ways to skin a cat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, oh my. <laughs> so, 
So I feel um, at this thought, it makes it even more confusing because now you have people telling you different things. Yeah. I think later on, as you go, I've come to appreciate it because it's kind of an amalgamation of different styles yeah. and you learn what you like. Yeah, you find your yeah, own, you find your own way of doing things, yeah. um, which is quite fun. But especially at the start, it's like, oh, okay, like I, I try my best, but I don't really know yeah. if this person is going to agree with yes. the way I'm trying to do especially it. Especially if you have like, like an Odo, for example, you have one supervisor, like your designated or your assigned supervisor who tells you do it this way, but then you have another supervisor who'll come to you just to look and say, why are you doing it like this? And I'm like, my supervisor said so, but now I need to change it because you're telling me that's the wrong way to do it, or I like doing it better like this. And then you follow that supervisor's advice and it just does not go well, which is something that happened to me with a past two. <laughs> like a past two is fairly easy to kind of just go through. And it just did not go well because I didn't use the same method that I always used in preclinical. Mm. I used the method that another supervisor told me mm. to use. So, yeah, it's like you said, I think the more we go into it, the more you listen to supervisors, but you're like, this one was better for me. And I know that if I do it the way this supervisor told me, it's not going to go well. Mm. And so for Odo, like restorative, how would you say the difference has been from preclin to clin? No than, rubber dams. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that's been the main yeah. difference. <laughs> I do think it's quite funny in preclin. It's like if you don't put a rubber dam on the patient, patient's just gonna die. <laughs> yes. It's like oh, you wanna put fissure sealant on this yeah. patient without a rubber dam? Are, are you crazy? crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, yeah. bro? Yeah, <laughs> rubber dam. That's the <laughs> major thing. <laughs> yeah, and then we placed it on each other for the first time in those mm. first two weeks. Didn't go well because you don't even know which one is best to do it on, and you're like, I'm making you bleed yeah, now. Yeah, that's a traumatic experience. It is a traumatic experience. For everyone involved. For, you, for your clinical partner as well. You're just like, it's fine, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I mean, it hasn't been bad. It really hasn't been bad. The only bad thing is patients cancelling or mm. you go in there knowing what you're going to do with a specific patient and that patient cancels. You get a completely different patient mm. who doesn't need any fillings. They need a scale and polish and then you completely waste yeah. the session as well. Yeah, that's, I think, a big... That was, like, a big shock for me as well, getting into the clinical years, is, like, the extra clinical stuff that you don't really think about. Because yeah. it's, like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm doing, like, a class four restoration today and then you'll get the patient is going to show up yes. so then you get this whole different case and it's like you haven't really prepared for it mentally at all and it's just like that massive shift just throws you off yeah. completely or like for example my first ever earlier session um i <laughs> thought i was doing a class five restoration which then turned into an emergency root canal oh nice and it's like first, first ever session, session i was just like you know what doc you do You're this i'll watch you uh, <laughs> mentally i'm not I'm not here for this. No. I, I, I like this. I, I might die. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even be the patient. Yeah. It's you. You're the. Am I the problem? <laughs> yeah. Um, Would you say it's been more difficult to work on actual teeth as opposed to like the type of dance we used in preclinical, or like what's kind of been that experience? Because obviously in preclin, it's very set. It's like. Uh, two millimeters deep like yeah. 1.5 millimeters wide all that stuff yeah, but obviously clinically yeah. you're just hunting for the caries taking that out mm. seeing like how far you were from the pole if it needs liners that kind of stuff yeah. it's a bit of a different game mm. so how has the that transition been has it been like hard or would you say it's been not easier? really I, I wouldn't say easier um, but it hasn't really been hard to start working on actual natural teeth um, I think the hardest part has been knowing how deep you need to go mm -hmm. in terms of is this caries or am I just burning a tooth? Yeah, you know, yeah. like so. Like there was there was this one session where um, I felt like I was getting really close to the pulp. I saw this little like red looked red dot. So I called the supervisor. They just went like two millimeters deep. A thing was gone. You're not close to the pulp. I'm like, how did you yeah. know? <laughs> How did you yeah. know that you could go so much deeper? That was pop to yeah. me. So I think that's been the most difficult aspect of like changing from plastic teeth to actual teeth. Mm. 
But other than that, I don't really think Odo has been very hard. Mm. Endo either. Um, I had my first endo session last week. And it went pretty good. I had a premolar, which started off as two roots. So I was like, nice. 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 And I kind of knew going in because it's my CPC patient, so uh, I know that I'm doing it yeah. on the premolar, so I've like mentally prepared myself to yeah. <laughs> you know do a double rooted premolar. Um, but then at a point they just join, and I'm like, thank you. It's just <laughs> one root. It's just one root. So that session went pretty well. Supervisor helped a lot because obviously it's my first session. Mm. Like I know the steps, but I don't know if I'm doing it right. Yeah. I don't know how to proceed now. And then I saw that patient again this week and had to do the first step all over again because supervisor and I got to the wrong working mm. length. So I think endo is more about whether you actually get an endo patient on an endo session because mm. I've, I've heard a lot of the students haven't had have had like three endo sessions or two endo sessions and one of them is an endo it's an extraction because mm -hmm. it's in the periapical so why did they even book yeah. this patient for an endo so you really lose a lot of time when it like mm -hmm. we said before patients don't show up but it's the wrong patient but yeah it hasn't really been so bad i feel like endo is when you're doing it in preclinical it feels like you have no idea what's going on mm -hmm. and it's so much easier as well because it's not in a patient's mouth you can clearly see the access cavity yeah. you made you can move the tooth around you know <laughs> the chief is a bit too far chief is a little too far you can see it going through um but yeah i mean i think odo and endo have been pretty chill i can say pretty chill mm. so far compared to all the other ones mm. yeah i feel like for for a lot of people odo is almost the easiest one to transition yeah. into i think because I think there's a decent correlation between preclin and clinical. Yes, I think Obviously, it's the only one that has an actual good correlation. <laughs> in terms of actually like um, doing the procedure, yes. in terms of knowing how to mm. use the handpiece, which birds do what, that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, whereas with the others, it's more in your head leading up to it. And then when you need to do the thing, it's like, okay, I understand this is how, for example, I need to mix the alternate. Yeah. But when you actually start trying to mix it, it's like, okay, why is half of the alternate now on the other side of the cubicle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. like, like all these things that yeah. it's like, see, I know what I'm supposed to do. I just don't actually know how to do it. Yeah. Like, how do I get my hands to do that? Yeah. So yeah, I feel like that, like looking back, that was also a big thing that I needed to, needed to figure out mm. during those early months. Um, how would you say the experience has been with patients, actually like interacting with patients and kind of having that trust factor mm. of someone like laying down and being like, okay, I'm going to trust this person yeah. to work on me now. How, how's that been for you? I mean, I haven't really gotten patients who don't want to be there. Not yet, anyways. I've had patients who are very happy with like the end product and they're willing to come back except one patient who cancelled but then it's like their problems so it's not because they didn't want to show mm. up so I really haven't had a bad experience with patients yet for me to be able to say that it's been going horribly mm. and I feel like I am a very social person so I will talk to you whether you're going to respond to me or not, you know. Which is ideal in dentists. Which is ideal. The patient has a section and probably not going to say much. No, yeah. So. Every time I tell them, we're going to take a shower now, so you need to hold this for me. You know, so I try to make it as easy for him yeah. and for myself as I possibly can. Because if you have a patient who doesn't really want to hold the suction, you kind of need to get them to hold that yeah. suction, you know. So I have, I've had pretty good patients so far so my experience with them has been good yeah nice yeah it sounds like the it sounds like the transition for you hasn't been as bad and i'm mm -hmm. kind of listening to, yeah to everything mm -mm. not really like i said it's just getting everything you think you know from theory into practice mm -hmm. yeah and then it's not just going well so you need to redo things so i think it's just been difficult having to redo things so you start getting frustrated and the more frustrated you get or the more impressions you take, the worse it starts <laughs> to go for you. 
<laughs> so I don't think it's been bad transitioning into it. I think it's just not expecting for you to have to redo mm. things so many times. And also like in the odontology wards, you don't know where anything is yeah. in the beginning. So the first sessions you take an entire hour just cleaning because you don't know where the little plastics mm. are. You don't know where to get your instruments. You don't know where this is. And then you don't know where to take them in the end and you're already going yeah. over time and you're just running around with your burrs in a little pack. You're like, where do I yeah. go? Yeah, so, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's again that thing of like the extra clinical stuff, yes. things you didn't think were going to be an issue. No. So I remember like at the start, my supervisors would be like, they'd like look at my tray and they're like, where's this? Where's this? Like, where's your polishing cup? And it's like, that's a great question. <laughs> like, if you know, let Please me know. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. You know? Yeah, so yeah, the first few weeks were like that. But mm. the more you start doing it, the more you know, like, hey, this goes here. And you still forget sometimes, like, this goes in a little styrofoam cup, but it doesn't just go outside. So yeah, it hasn't really been bad transitioning. Like I said, it's just things going wrong or you not knowing where things are mm. or supervisors telling you one thing and another. I think that's what makes it the hardest. Mm. But it seems like in general, um, and that's part of why I wanted to interview you is it, it seems like you try and have a lot of fun Yeah. when it comes to like the day-to-day -day stuff. Even if, things <laughs> try to. Go, even if things are going wrong in the lab. So <laughs> it, it, we're trying, you know, yeah. we're moving. <laughs> so what's kind of your general, um, I guess, attitude when it comes to dentistry? And I think also like when it comes to dentistry and the whole question of like having a life outside what of life? dentistry. <laughs> so. Um. Yeah, I mean, last year was very hectic. So third year was a lot. I didn't feel like I had much of a life outside of having to study. And I think this year is kind of going to be the same. I'm going to try and change that because once we start with tests and exams at the end of the month, it's every week. Mm. It's every four days you have a test. Mm. So it's not like you can go out and then be extremely tired the next day because you start studying the next day. So you take a day off. Like I usually just go to the gym or I just read, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's more about you finding what you want to do in your spare time because right now our spare time is being in the lab. <laughs> so just building dentures, bite blocks, you've done it for three years and you still don't know how high a bite block needs to be. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we'll see how fourth year starts to go and once we actually start with the exams. But for now, it's been pretty chilled. Um, yeah, if you don't have clinicals in the afternoon, you kind of can do whatever you want unless you, you know, start students and already start studying because we don't really have much things to do we've had an assignment here and there mm. and they've given us assignments as well but they're only due like way later mm. in the uh, middle of the year so yeah we don't really have much to do yet in terms of like having to make so much time for your external life apart from the industry mm. so yeah it's been pretty chill so far mm. would you say like the clinicals have been more <coughs> or less draining than, than you oh, expect. so much more draining. Mm -hmm. Especially prosto. You really wouldn't expect it to drain, mm -hmm. to drain you so much because you're literally just standing next to your yeah. patient the whole time. Yeah. You're either looking at them or <laughs> facing your yeah. back to them. But yeah, it's been a lot more draining mm -hmm. than I thought it was going to be. I feel like also because... Like we said in odontology, you need to stand up. Oh, I forgot this. So you need to quickly walk again. And oh, I forgot to take my gloves off. I can't go there without my gloves. When, in contrast, when you're in pre clin you just stand up, go get something. You forgot mm -hmm. it, you know. So I think that's why it's kind of draining. Mm -hmm. And also because you start stressing out. Mm -hmm. You get anxious because things aren't going well. You're running behind on time. You need to finish a certain thing at a specific time. So I think that's why it's mostly draining and then you're late for your next pre-clinic to, um, to your next clinical because you went way over time mm, with yeah, your first one. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's why it's been draining. Mm. But yeah, other than that, if 
everything went perfectly smoothly, I don't think you'd be doing dentistry. Yeah. So you really wouldn't be in dentistry yeah. if it was going fine for yeah. you. Yeah, it's an interesting point, I think. Um, okay, and yeah, I, I think part of maybe why the first part of fourth year is kind of very chill, specifically in the regards of not having a lot of work mm -hmm. after the day, is because I think the work that you do during the day is so exhausting at the start yes. that by the time you get home, it's like, even if I had an assignment, I probably wouldn't do have done it anyway, you know? <laughs> yes. So that's why I say, we're going to see how the transition yeah. goes once we start yeah. with tests and exams. Which I think, um, yeah, what she said about like the whole easy and dangerous thing. Um, uh, a lot of times when I have younger students like assisting, they ask me like if it gets better. And I'm like, I know the answer you want is that it somehow gets easier yes. at some point, but I'm like, that's not really the point of the exercise. No. Like it's it, it's a difficult degree. Yeah. Like it's just it's not magically going to become easy one day. And I think, and this is something that I only appreciated very recently now that I'm in final year, which is that you learn a lot of things over the years as you go through the industry. Um, but there will always be like difficult problems. It's just that the problems change. Yeah. Now the problem is no longer like, how do I take this impression? It's like, okay, cool. I can now take the impression. But now you're like worrying about all, all these other things, which is like, okay, now I suddenly have a lot more patients than I did yeah. previously. So yes. it's like, how am I going to juggle everyone? Did this patient get that appliance? Did this get sent to the lab? And there's like, it's the same, um, I guess, level of difficulty. It's just the minutia of the actual problem yeah. has just changed a yeah. little bit. And I think what you might still experience, especially in the next few months, is I think your perspective on modules might change as well. Because it's, it's always fascinating to me asking people like, what their favorite modules are like at the start of fourth year and then you ask them again at the end of fourth year. Yeah, it's and it's completely <laughs> different. If you ask me, start of fourth year, prosthodontics, I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. If I knew I had prosthodontics that week, the whole week I would be thinking about the prosthodontics <laughs> session, you know, that Thursday morning, oh my goodness, if I can just get past Thursday morning, then I can yeah. be happy again. Um, and now, I love pros. I think it's probably my favorite thing mm. because it's that thing of like at the start, it, I think it's hard to enjoy a game that you're not good at. Yeah. You know? So it's like at the start, I wasn't, I was terrible at mm. the game that was cross yeah. but eventually you, you get better at it. And then it's like, okay, I can actually do the thing now. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. And it's like, yes, you're still facing the problems, but I think the fun aspect of it kind of comes back, which I think is something that like, and I guess you can you can comment on this pretty well. I feel like at the start of fourth year, people kind of maybe lose the fun factor a little mm. bit because it's like you're going into every session knowing you're about to struggle for yeah. the next two hours. Yes. So how, like, what's your feeling on it? Like, with clinicals, do you have like, and especially at, like at the start, did you have like kind of dread going into the clinicals? Oh, yes, or? definitely. And I still kind of do. Like, Max Fack, every time like I have I'm not going to have it for like I think the next two weeks and I've only had three sessions and one of them was a, like an extra book session <laughs> and I'm still absolutely terrified every time I go there mm. because like I said I haven't done most of the injections and the blocks yet so I still have no idea how to do those mm. um, I don't ever know what tooth I'm going to have to extract is it the third like the last molar is it going to be an anterior and I'm, am I going to struggle is the patient going to be super young is that bone going to be super thick so yeah max pack always has me completely terrified <laughs> I think until way later in the year once I start getting the hang of it which I don't really think <laughs> I'll ever be getting I just I just need to I don't know get some machines or something to strengthen my grip because wow <laughs> and yeah like you said you hated prosto yeah I haven't necessarily been enjoying prosto that much but I think it's because I've been struggling mm. and it is the first time I'm doing mm. everything on my own so I think once I get through my first 
own patient and not like a lab um, work patient, I feel like it'll be much easier to start going into again because I've already struggled and I know I'm going to struggle, but I'll kind of know how to fix it like you said before. And so what have you kind of been, I guess, telling yourself to get yourself to like keep going during this phase where like everything is just very much a struggle? I mean, I've always been motivated. So I always go and say, I'm going to struggle, but I have to do it. Like I, I need to struggle. Like I explained with my first max pack session, I know I'm going to struggle. I don't know how much force I need to put in this thing. I struggled for a solid 50 minutes. Let's tell my story now. I almost passed out in my first <laughs> max pack session. Um, yeah. And it was, I didn't even start moving. I had not grabbed a force. No. I just did my first year superior mm-hmm. with palatal infiltration didn't work very well like it didn't go through well um then the doctor had to come help like top it up and I don't think because I'd noticed in second year when I was when we were assisting in second year I'm not good if I see you doing something Mm. like I'm not okay here Mm. I feel so much better doing it myself and Mm. I'll be fine because, yeah, first max pack, um assisting session in second year, I also had to sit down. <laughs> um, so when the supervisor had to come and do the um, palatal infiltration, because it's my first time doing a palatal one, I don't know how deep I need to go. I don't know how it feels. And the resistance you feel once you start yeah. actually infiltrating is insane. Yeah. And, like, I didn't know that. I don't think anyone knew how much yeah. pressure you actually have yeah. to put. So I see the doctor doing it and I'm like, I need to sit down. Mm. And I was perfectly fine. Mm. And I felt okay. Like he explained, I genuinely went up to him and I'm like, I'm absolutely terrified with this infiltration. Please explain to me, stand next to me, you know? So I was okay with all of that. I felt calm going into it. He was next to me while I was doing it. He was telling me, yes, you're going fine. Go a little deeper. But once he started doing it, I'm like, no. I need to sit down. Mm. So because in MaxFact, you need to wear your white coat, and I only have the long sleeve coat, you need to wear those plastic sleeves, an apron, Mm. your mask, your gloves. I was getting insanely hot Mm. at that moment. So I was like, I need to sit down, and the doctors just stripped me of everything. Mm. And I'm like, wow, this feels great. Felt perfectly fine. Struggled with the tooth for 50 minutes, got it out. So, you know, it was a slow start, yeah. but when we finally got to it, I think that's why I'm still so stressed always mm. for yeah. Max back. Yeah, because that first impression was... Yes, that first impression was insane. <laughs> yeah, I think, and I think especially with um, the more surgically oriented things, um, I think... It's, it's, it's a strange thing to do, yes. you know, like I, it's not a normal thing to like put a needle in someone mm. or to like take out a tooth and this blood and all this kind mm. of stuff. Like it's kind of traumatic, but you're kind of, you're expected to be desensitized mm. to it at that point. And I think when you're working, it's not as bad because you're actively problem solving the yes. whole time. But I think the moment you step back and you see someone else you, do you it, kind of like the reality kind of hits you a bit yes. and it's like, oh, this is because even for me last year, this was uh, pretty late in the I think it was like August, September, somewhere there. Um, I had a session where I needed to extract a 4.8 and I was like really, really struggling with this tooth and it just was not coming out. And eventually I had to just like swallow my pride and ask the supervisor to help me. Mm. Um, so I stood back and, and I watched the supervisor work and he was also struggling and was really just like moving the patient yeah. around trying to get this tooth out. And in that moment, just seeing that, even though I have been extracting for almost two years, um, it's not often you see someone else extracting. Yeah. And the moment I saw that, I the whole room started going sideways. I was just like, um, so a few minutes later, I was in a whole different room. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did I get here? <laughs> yeah. So, so no, I think I, I think it's normal. I think it's it's not something that 
we always get prepped on. Mm. But I think it's because also like for the supervisors, it's the whole thing. Like they've been doing it so long. It's yeah. hard to appreciate how it is like when it's your first time yes. doing it. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of the procedures, like there's an element of like, this is kind of, kind of shocking. Like this is yeah. really stressful. So yeah, no, I, I, I think like it's, it's, it's normal. Okay. To, it to, makes to me feel better that, to know yeah. that you almost passed yeah. out too. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like, yeah, if I got through that first session and I'm still going for it. Yeah. I'm mm. like I said, I've just been, I need to do it. Whether mm. I'm terrified or not, I have to go into this preclin. Whether I hate it or not, mm. I have to go into this preclin. Mm. So I think that's what keeps me motivated, mm. let's say, for the like clinicals. Mm. Just knowing you need you have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's part of the process. Yeah. Um yeah, I think for me as well, I, I always try to speak to all the students to just get their perspective mm. and they were just like, Yeah, yeah, like it sucks and it sucks that it sucks. <laughs> yeah. But you'll get better, you'll get more comfortable. Yeah. And now that I'm there and I'm like at a point where I feel more comfortable with things, I'm like, okay, if I can do it, I'm sure other people can do it as well, you know. So it's like it is just uh, it is just it's a practical sport at the yeah. end of the day and you have to just show up and just get through those days where yeah. you don't really know what you're doing yet and your hands also don't really know yes. what you're doing it. But eventually you'll get this kind of intuition mm. when it comes to the industry. But you're getting to that point. That, I think, is the tough part. Mm. That is what I think makes dental school tough. Yeah. Um, I think especially at the end, it's not really about the procedures anymore, but it's just that constant of experience of mastering something mm. and then going back to square one where you're just terrible. Yeah, that's why I said I won't have any extraction sessions <clears throat> for the next two weeks. So I'm going to be extra terrified once I start doing it again in the next two weeks because mm. I haven't been practicing or I haven't been doing it or I'm not used to it anymore. So, yeah, and like you said with the younger years asking you if it gets better, you can't say it gets better because it could start absolutely great for you mm. and then it goes terribly in the end. So, no, it went worse, yeah. you know. Yeah. So you can't ever really rely on saying, mm. yeah, it gets better. No, it won't. You'll be great one day and then it will be horrible the next day and you'll have to redo another thing the next week. So... Mm. So on that point, if you had to give younger Laura a bit of advice, like let's say you could go back to like first year self, what do you think is like one piece of advice that you would have given yourself? I really don't know. Probably get better with my hands. I've always been very suckish with my hands. Um, yeah, I feel like if if I knew how it was going to be in like third year, fourth year, I think it would have been so much easier in first year or just starting saying, okay, I know in third year I'm going to be using my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. I need to start, you know, focusing more on what I'm doing, you know, being more centered in what I'm doing, get mm -hmm. less distracted. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really think you can essentially prepare yourself mm. like like you said looking back and telling myself do this differently because I don't think I would have done anything differently if you're going to struggle you're going to struggle mm. it's part of the learning yeah. process yeah yeah I think yeah the whole thing of like dexterity mm. is also something that I wish I I could have told myself to think a bit more yeah. about from early on because yeah like I said start free <laughs> <Well, laughs> Bottom of the class. Um, <laughs> no, me too. I'm, I'm still so, super slow. So <laughs> as long as you get the work done, yeah. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest thing is just realizing how how practical it is. Mm. Like how, how much of it is you physically doing something. Yes. Which I think is just hard to anticipate mm. in the early years. It's like, yeah, oh, I can't get there. Yeah. And then you get there. And when you get like, there, you're oh, like, wow. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I remember even um, in Perio, I feel like I only very recently got the hang of probing. Oh, that's of, like, great. We're struggling <laughs> so much. Because <laughs> I feel like it's again that thing of like, did the probe reach the bottom of the pocket? Yeah. Or can I, I just go stay? any deeper? Yes, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we've been having that issue with probing as mm -hmm. well. And you feel like it's not 
like going to go in mm. but it easily can mm. and you're just scared that mm. you're going to make the yeah. pocket and it's not yeah. there's no actual pocket yeah and then especially when you present to the supervisor and they get like double you guys like, oh, like, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, I haven't even gone through that yet. My patient cancel. I haven't, oh. even, I haven't even finished probing. That's the great part of it. <laughs> so we'll see how good I'm doing yeah. with that later. <laughs> and then, okay, so final question I want to end off of since you're now up there. I'm going to ask you this again at the end of the year. Okay. But start of the year, what's been the most fun? Like in terms of... Preclin or like theory or in general? Just in general, like the kind of, what aspect of the work or what kind of work has been the most fun for you? Like to give an example for me, um, I think back when I started, I think the most fun for me was like the patient aspect of it, like actually getting down mm -hmm. to talk to someone. Like that for me was, I think, what really motivated me yeah. through those early times. So what do you think? Since you're like here, sort of on the cusp of you know, uh, the 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 <laughs> of of like now becoming a clinician, what is something that's been actually like quite enjoyable for you? Definitely patients. Odo, odontology has been my favorite so far. I feel like you have a lot of control of mm -hmm. what's going on. So if something's not going well, you're like, I'm just going to remove this quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, well as if you compare it to OFC. You're like, oh, damn, I actually acted wrong too, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like Odo is very, you're right yeah. there. It's, like, yeah, it's like repercussions. Yeah, it's you business. and that single tooth. Mm -hmm. So I've been enjoying that. And like I said earlier, I'm very social. So yeah, patience. I've been enjoying the patience that I've had so far. So that's been fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I think, like I said, I think Odo is one of the nice ones to yeah. like, transition into. And I think especially later on, it becomes very satisfying when your work also like starts getting very aesthetic yeah um, and I think that's nice about um, restorative work as well as like the patient also sees the difference yes. something like Perio it's like you have to convince them time and that time it's again going to... that, that like this is doing something yes but with odontology it's kind of like okay they had a gap that gap is no longer there mm. and so they feel really good about yeah. that as well yeah so I think it's nice seeing um that like oh all this stuff that you've been studying has like an actual positive yeah, effect there's on, a benefit someone's on life. someone. Yeah. I think that's why I've been liking Odo so much because I've already experienced that my one patient has been really happy with what I what ended what how it ended up looking. And I think that's what motivates me with the Odo. Mm -hmm. That I think that's why I've been liking Odo, because they can see. Because mm -hmm. like I said, with OFC you extract a tooth and you're like, great, now there's a hole in my yeah. mouth. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now I have one less tooth to be able to chew on the mm -hmm. side. So yeah, I think Odo is a much more like aesthetic part for the patient for them to to mm -hmm. go through in like a dental situation for them to go to the dentist and say the dentist is going to take this black mark out of my tooth today mm -hmm. and I'm going to feel so much better without the black mark on my tooth. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that way of looking at it. Yeah. Okay, I think I think that's a that's a perfect way to end. Thank you for letting me <laughs> yeah. pick your brain on all of this. Thanks for inviting me. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you're the, you're the celebrity out of the two of us. Yeah, so now you're going to be famous. Yeah, now I'm going to be famous. Now you're going to be famous. <laughs> Wait, now I, now I get to test you. Do you know what the, you know what the like, tagline is at the end of each episode or not? Fake fan. Fake fan. Yeah, I'm not even going to do it. I'm just going to end it there. That was going to be a horrible thanks, video. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>